Oh, there's one more thing about Tracy I think you should know. Her gets so wet, you can't believe it. To be honest, I forgot this movie existed, so I wasn't surprised when only one person guessed this movie review. During the late 90s and early 2000s, there was a sea of high school young adult themed films, so I believe this film got lost within that. But listen, if you loved my She Devil or Ringmaster reviews, you're going to love this one because, baby, the mess. The drama. And the Countess will be back in full effect for this one. I noticed so many things that went way over my head when I was younger. So you know we're going to talk about it. So let's get into it. So the movie starts off with us meeting one of our main characters, Jim, who is up early getting a run in before officially starting his day as a teacher at the local high school. After he freshens up, he goes to the teacher's lounge to store his food, but baby, the refrigerator was interesting. <laughs> he decides to do a good deed by throwing away all the old food, but while doing that, he makes a mess, which leads this janitor to mind his business and keep it moving. Shortly after, we meet our other main character, Tracy, who is your typical overachiever, but like times two. <laughs> She's in school before it starts and leaves after everyone's gone, including the teachers. But she's there per usual preparing to have her peers sign up to support her in becoming class president we also get a hint that things will eventually go left between them none of this would have happened if mr McAllister hadn't meddled the way he did you can't interfere with destiny and if you try to interfere the same thing's just gonna happen anyway and you'll just suffer we get a montage time of the various ways Jim was an involved teacher. He even won Teacher of the Year. He was clearly passionate about his job and the students appreciated him for it. We also get to see him in the classroom teaching. Tracy is one of his students. And though Tracy is persistent in raising her hand for every question, which is not necessarily a bad thing, you can tell that Jim was trying desperately to call on everyone but her. But it's here that we learn that Jim doesn't really care too much for Tracy. I'd seen a lot of ambitious students come and go over the years, but Tracy Flick, she was a special case. Get a montage time of Tracy. Like I said before, Tracy is an over, over achiever. Super involved in school, always has to be the leader or the best in everything she does. We also learned that she's currently running unopposed for class president. But if you thought that was it, <laughs> that Miss Tracy was your typical do good teenager and nothing else was going on, Baby, you were highly mistaken. Oh, there's one more thing about Tracy I think you should know. Her gets so wet, you can't believe it. Now, I warned y'all that this was messy. So, keep up. You may be wondering who this guy is. His name is Dave, a grown-ass man, friend and co-worker to Jim. And yes, he's a teacher at the school, and he's been sleeping with Tracy. So apparently Dave came to the high school to teach a year after Jim did, which was a dream to him because he was mentally stuck in his high school years. Jim and Dave's wives became best friends and everything was cool until the situation with Tracy. And then we get to hear Tracy's side of things. Everything was normal until her junior year when he took all the students involved with the student newspaper out to eat. One by one, each student left, but he and Tracy talked long into the night. And Jim, <laughs> dude was calculating. I noticed that you don't seem to have any close friends at Carver, and I think you are one of the most talented. 
attractive, brilliant students. It just seems to me like he might need a friend. And they go speeding into all the inappropriate stuff, sneaking into dark rooms to make out, and then to hear her trying to justify it. Since I grew up without a dad, you might assume psychologically I was looking for a father figure. It was just that Dave was so strong, and he made me feel so safe and protected. Child, he used to take this girl to his home while his wife was gone. And unfortunately, they went all the way too. And Jim was disgusted at this and confronted him. Dave had the nerve to tell him that they were in love and how she supports him. Ciao. She inspires me in ways that Linda never has. She even wants to read my novel. But you haven't written your novel. That's the whole point. Jim tells him that what he's doing is wrong and immoral, but of course, Dave didn't listen and it ends badly for him. Did you cross the line with this girl? We're in love. <laughs> so after it all came out, of course his wife, Linda, left him and kicked him out the house. Oh, and Dave didn't go to jail for this either. And now we see why Jim feels a way about Tracy, which makes zero sense. I get that she's annoying, but what Dave did, that was on a whole other level. But then we see how Tracy feels about Jim. She talks about how he's stuck doing the same thing day after day, year after year, while everyone goes on with their lives and assumes he must be jealous of that. We also get some background to explain why Tracy is the way she is. She's an only child. Her mother was a paralegal and really instilled in Tracy to be and do her best, to be ambitious and persistent, and that she was. This girl was running against no one for class president. She had basically won already, but she was still obsessed with getting all her signatures, which when you think about it, that was pretty commendable. But after school, she hunts down Jim to give him her signatures and she says this. When I win the presidency, that means you and I are gonna be spending a lot of time together. And I for one would really like that time to be harmonious and productive, wouldn't you? Sure. Anyway, we see Jim go to clean out his car, conveniently throwing away Tracy's list of signatures. It's here where we get a peek into Jim's home life. We meet his wife of nine years, Diane. They're in a happy marriage, for now. After not being able to sleep, Jim goes downstairs to release some frustration. And it's here, while he stares at a Pepsi can, that he gets a bright idea. Enter Paul. Paul is another student at the high school. Paul's clumsy ass broke his leg snowboarding and is now unable to play football for the rest of the school year. Jim pulled Paul to the side to encourage him to run for class president and give Tracy a little competition. Now, Paul is insistent on not running, saying how Tracy seemed really excited about it and how he didn't want to impose, but Jim wouldn't take no for an answer. He even uses the chalkboard to further prove his case and Paul eventually decides to go for it. And you already know Tracy was not here for it. She immediately confronts Paul, becoming irritated at her new competition. Then we get a little background on Paul and his sister Tammy as well. Now, Tammy has fallen in love with her classmate, Lisa, but unfortunately for her, the feeling is not mutual. And when Lisa tries to express her disinterest in their situation, in barges Paul, who lacks situational awareness. Don't you fucking knock. Yeah. Oh, hi, Lisa. Get, get out, Paul. Listen, so Mr. McAllister called. And then we learn a little bit about Tammy. It's not like I'm a lesbian or anything. It's just that all the people I've ever been attracted to happen to be girls. Tammy was obsessed with Lisa. They both were unsure about things, but Lisa was borderline the Lulu and mad disrespectful. I'm not like you, okay? I'm not a dyke and we're not in love. We're just experimenting. We get a montage time of Lisa and Tammy's love affair if we can call it that. But at first, things were all good. They had fun together, hung out all the time, but then it, it got a little dark. If you died right now, I would throw myself into one of my dad's cement trucks and get poured into your tomb. 
Now, if I was Lisa, I would have been done after that. But it was clear that Tammy didn't care about what people thought about her and who she loved, and Lisa definitely did. And this created some friction, along with the fact that Lisa was sleeping with Paul, Tammy's brother. Yeah. And again, this dude was clueless. First, Lisa has a big fight with my sister, and the next thing you know, she's my girlfriend. Child, Lisa started hyping Paul up, topping Paul up, being his public relations person. Homegirl moved fast, okay? And Tammy was playing Inspector Gadget and ended up catching them making out. So what did she do after all this? She decides to run for class president, and of course, Tracy was pissed along with Lisa. It's a conflict of interest and Paul was first. She's doing this to get back at me. For what? I mean at you. For what? And now with Tammy joining the race, this caused a flood of other students to run for class president, much to Tracy's dismay. Homegirl's blood pressure is probably through the roof right now. We go back to Jim where we learn that he and his wife have been helping out Dave's wife, Linda. Jim and Diane have been trying for a baby for quite a while. At first, the process was fun, but over time, it turned into a lustless routine occurrence. But with Dave being gone and not around to help Linda, Jim started to help her out around the house. He started helping her put things up, helping with yard work, basically being a stand-in helpmate. And you already know, this never <laughs> ends well. And Jim comes to Linda, with the bullshit. So what do you think? Should we get a room? That's not funny. That's when she should have told Diane and stopped communication with him altogether. And why would he even try that with her, knowing what she had just been through? And then he came home acting like nothing happened and had the nerve to say this. Linda's great, but she can be a little bit much sometimes. And it gets worse because he starts imagining Linda while having sex with his wife. And strangely, Tracy as well. Do it, Mr. M. Do it. Me, Mr. M. Me. But we fast forward to an assembly where we see all the students who are running for class president. Each student goes up to express why they would be the best candidate, and Tracy goes up first. And the students don't take her seriously at all. Not as seriously as she takes herself. Paul goes up. And him being the popular kid, he instantly gets a lot of praise. But listen, he put zero effort into this speech. When you think about it, a school is more than a school. It's our second home where we spend all our time and grow as individuals and a community. But Tammy, <laughs> Tammy was ready. She came with straight facts at some points and teenage ignorance at others. And everyone makes the same pathetic promises just so they can put it on their transcripts to get into college. I will immediately dismantle the student government so that none of us will ever have to sit through one of these stupid assemblies again. But she eventually went over the crowd and it's clear that she's the favorite. But the principal was big mad. That little bitch made a fool out of us. I want her out of this election. And they ended up suspending her for three days after, even threatened to expel her if she messes up again. But she wasn't bothered at all by this suspension. She took this time to ride her bike around the neighborhood and on one of her rides, she saw a soccer team playing in a field and noticed that this soccer team belonged to a local all girls private school, which got her excited. This is important, we'll, we'll come back to this. But sometime after, Paul tries to slip her a note to tell her that he collected her schoolwork for her and to also question her reasoning behind running for class president when she knew he was running. She offers him nothing though, and he goes on to say this. I want you to know that no matter who wins, you or me, there's no hard feelings. We're still brother and sister, okay? Even though you're adopted, I hope you feel the same. This dude is just... <laughs> Bless his heart. Anyway, we go back to Tracy. That little bitch Tammy Metzler wanted to make a fool out of me. Well, it wasn't gonna work. Tracy goes on to talk about how the students are ungrateful and that they don't see all that she does for the school and for them. Again, this girl is just roaming around the school long after everyone's gone. So as she goes to leave out, she notices that one of her posters is starting to come down. She tries two times to fix it, but it was that third time that got her in her feelings and sent her into a rage. Nobody's posters were safe. 
she tore them all down. And once she calmed down and realized what she did, she knew she had to hide the evidence. So her ass picks up all the torn posters and takes them to a local dump, where Tammy is conveniently wallowing in her thoughts and sees her dumping the bag. Tracy doesn't see her though, and she drives off. We go to Jim, who is back at Linda's, even after his outlandish suggestion. But this day was different. Linda goes to hug him to thank him for helping yet again. And this time, the feeling was mutual, and they started, well. Yeah. In front of the damn child. <laughs> Just gross. And Linda decided to take him up on his previous offer and tells him to go get a room. And baby Jim was on cloud nine. Oh, trifling ass. But when he comes in, there's some drama brewing among the students. Tracy's antics with the posters has caused some issues. She gets called to the principal's office and Jim is there to question her about what happened with the posters. Tracy comes in denying it, but Jim is unfazed and tells her that he thinks she did it since she was the only student in the school over the weekend. Over the weekend. Child, this girl needs a life. But Jim goes on to tell her how she's intelligent, but doing crazy things to get ahead at the expense of others will eventually catch up to her. And then he brings his personal feelings into it and they have a back and forth. And I also think that certain young and naive people need to thank their lucky stars that the entire school didn't find out about certain indiscretions. And I think certain older people, like you and your colleague, shouldn't be leching after their students, especially when some of them can't even get their own wives pregnant. She hit them with that one. That's what really did it right there. But Tammy comes into the office and declares that she knows who tore down the posters, which has Tracy shaking in her boots. But Tammy does the unexpected by claiming that she was the one who tore down the posters. And Jim doesn't believe her, and Tammy expected this would happen, so she pulled out the torn posters from her backpack. And while this was happening, Tracy saw her pulling out the posters from the window and almost lost her damn mind. But when she found out that Tammy had actually confessed to the crime, she still had the nerve to do this. You're gonna pay for my poster! Easy now, now, quit while you're ahead. Will you? Child, she should have just went silent and minded her business. <laughs> but anyway, Jim is looking forward to his motel date. So while his students are taking a pop quiz, he rushes out to Walgreens to get some flowers, some sort of wine, and chocolates. And then he goes to the room to set it up and even takes a whole bath. Mind you, what he's doing for Linda, he should have been trying to do that for his wife to spice it up. But I digress. He does all this and makes it back just in time. And after school, he rushes over to Linda's, but Linda is nowhere to be found. And Karma came early that day because while he was searching for Linda, he got stung in the eye by a bee, which starts a bad reaction. Jim goes back to the room to wait and he calls Linda, but she doesn't answer. We then go to Tammy who's getting lectured to by her parents and she's just sitting there taking it all in. And while they think they are punishing her by sending her to Immaculate Heart, the local all girls private school, child, that was her plan all along. Checkmate. Turns out <laughs> Linda never showed up. So Jim eventually went home to find that Linda was there and had told his wife everything. And I mean everything. He doesn't even say anything for himself. He just leaves out and accepts his fate. Then we go to Tracy, who is seeking higher assistance in winning class president. But now I really must insist that you help me win the election tomorrow because I deserve it and Paul Metzler doesn't, as you well know. This girl is delusional as hell, <laughs> but the prayers get even more outrageous. I know I don't believe in you, and I thought I should at least practice. I want Lisa to realize what a bitch she is. Oh, it wasn't over. Thank you for all your blessings. You've given me so many things like good health and what I'm told is a large penis, and I'm very grateful. Tell me why Jim is outside of Linda's house the next morning. This man stayed out there all night waiting for her to come home, and she never did. This man just said F his wife at this point. But that bee sting is on a whole other level now. He's greeted by Tracy and her cupcakes as soon as he gets to the school. 
I bet that was the last person he wanted to see. And tell me why, again, he calls Linda as soon as he got himself together. Why did you do that? You ruined Diane's life. You ruined my life. Is that what you wanted? It's Jim. I love you. He's losing it at this point. So we fast forward to everyone voting. Tracy, of course, votes for herself, while Paul decides that it will be absolutely crazy to vote for himself, and out the kindness of his heart, votes for Tracy. Do people always just vote for themselves? Cause I don't know. I just felt like it's not right to vote for yourself. So after the students vote, the election committee starts to count, while Jim, once again, reaches out to Linda. I don't even think he called his wife to check on her. But Linda finally answers. I was lonely. You took advantage. You hugged me. You kissed me. You're the one who... His day is just progressively getting worse. He makes it back to the room where the students are counting and he demands to know the count and it appears that Tracy has won by a single vote. Jim tells the students that he's gonna confirm the count, and while he's doing that, Tracy's nosy ass comes to spy, and this guy gives her the thumbs up, letting her know that she's the winner. And of course, she was excited. She was probably creating her acceptance speech in her head. And Jim came up with the same count as the students and was ready to call it, until he saw Tracy's ass celebrating in the hallway. The sight of Tracy at that moment affected me in a way I can't fully explain. Who knew how high she would climb in life? How many people would suffer because of her? I had to stop her. So he removes two votes and has the principal confirm his vote, which upsets this poor guy because he knew for a fact that he counted more votes. And Jim had the nerve to question his intelligence. This is gonna come back to bite him later. Wait for it. So the time finally comes to announce the new class president, and you already know Tracy was ready. But unfortunately... Paul Metzler. Jim had conflicted feelings about what he'd done while Tracy was headed towards a breakdown. Oh, girl was devastated, and Jim finally finds the time in his busy schedule to come home and talk to his wife. She didn't want to hear it, though. I'm pretty sure Linda told her that he'd been calling her. And child, he goes to the same hotel he went to when planning the affair with Linda. He even got the same room. A mess. But the next day, he woke up feeling better. He was actually excited about starting his day. His eye was even looking better, but as soon as he stepped into the principal's office, it was a wrap. Even the janitor has snitched. He was trying to help you out though. <laughs> anyway, Paul receives word that he in fact did not win the election. And of course, Jim was let go. Child, apparently this became national news. So everybody knew what happened. Diane filed for a divorce. Things were looking bad for your boy. And then he ran into this guy who still was in his feelings. But we learned what happened to Paul, Tammy and Tracy after the election. Lisa broke up with Paul during senior year and moved on quickly to another job. But Paul was able to get into the college he wanted and had plenty of fun. Tammy was living it up at Immaculate Heart and officially had her first girlfriend who actually wanted to be her girlfriend. As for Tracy, senior year was all the same. She was still super involved in school, went on to gain a full scholarship to Yale. She often thought about Dave and wondered if he had ever finished that alleged novel. That would be a no. But Tracy started to realize that she missed out on a lot in high school. She didn't have many friends, she didn't go to parties, she didn't have fun memories, and she thought it would change when she went to college, but she still didn't find her tribe. She still couldn't manage to live in the moment and just be a young adult. But we learned that Jim moved to New York and now works at the Museum of Natural History as a guide. He's even seen someone new. We also learned that he saw Tracy one last time in Washington, D.C. She didn't see him though, but he saw her getting into a limo with a representative. And Jim, he started feeling residual hate and disgust and decided to do this. Who the fuck does she think she is? Hey, you! And he ran before they could see him. But this scene was so funny to me. 
he was clearly traumatized. <laughs> but that's the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Where do I even start with this film? There was so much happening. This beef between Jim and Tracy was too much for me and uncalled for because Tracy was a whole child. Not only that, she was taken advantage of by your coworker and friend and then you turned around and blamed her for it. Dave should have known better. Then you turn right around and do the same thing Dave did to his wife with the same wife. I just, let's reel it in. Jim was a great teacher, super involved. He started off being a great husband, colleague, and friend. He was honest with Dave, telling him he was wrong and that he had to end it, though he should have reported his friend for what he was doing with Tracy. And to be all the way real, they both should have lost their jobs once Dave was caught. And then what really got me was, this man started to have feelings for Dave's wife. He suggested going to a motel room, bought her flowers, set the whole room up. I mean, these are the things that he could have been doing with his wife to spice things up. But I'm so happy they didn't have a kid. That lady gets to move on with her life and have a family with someone more deserving. Jim couldn't even be bothered to check on her after breaking her heart. So though extremely hurtful, I'm glad she didn't have a child to consider when deciding to end their marriage. She could just move on with her life. Jim blamed Tracy for what happened to Dave, despite the fact that he knew what Dave was doing was wrong. He despised that girl. Homegirl was a bit much, I know, but I guess when she read his ass for filth, it was a wrap in his mind and he went in for the kill. And what she said must have stuck because he was still in his feelings years later. As I said before, Tracy was a bit much but she wasn't horrible she was a sheltered naive girl who had a lot of book smarts but lacked life smarts easily taken advantage of by men and people like dave she went through her high school years and young adulthood with blinders on heavily focused on being a part of every committee coming to school early leave, leaving late coming to school on the weekends child but not really creating memories or joining in on experiences with her fellow peers she missed out on so much trying to lead everything and i get that she was an only child to a single mother so she felt like she had to work two times harder in order to secure her future but these were her carefree years that she would never get back i hope she became aware of that as she got older and learned to add in some fun while also working to achieve her goals as for paul and tammy child i'm just glad tammy is happy and around people who get her it seemed like her family didn't quite understand her and her former principal had it out for her. and paul will be <laughs> just fine i guess i hope paul was a good guy he could be kind of clueless sometimes but he was the only character in this movie that was ethical and moral the other characters were either one or the other while dave was neither <laughs> homeboy needed help but anyway, that's it y'all. Thanks for watching this movie review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time you guys. Bye.